Okay, I heard you guys have a special thing that tells you to be really, really good. And it starts as S P A R K. Let's try that again. I don't think you guys were awake. Ready? S P A R K. Great, that is good. Now we all turned our listening ears on. We're all going to listen and we're all going to be good little sparks, right? Yeah. All right. And there's good sparks and then there's some things that are not so good sparks, right? By raising your hand, can you tell me a not so good spark? Oh, the little boy back there. What's your name? What's a bad spark? What's a bad spark? Uh, shouting? Shouting is a bad spark. Okay, and what, by raising your hand, what's a good spark? Oh, the girl in the pink right here. Uh, it's when you, do, you don't talk. When you don't talk is a good spark, and you turn on those listening ears and you listen, right? Okay, that's good and bad. And I'm going to teach you something today about good and bad fire. And sparks are in fire, right? So there's good fires, which are campfires, right? With mommy and daddy. Or barbecuing. What about you barbecue with mommy and daddy and use fire? Yeah, that's good fire, right? Then there's also bad fire. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let me start off by telling you, my name is Miss Melissa. Can you guys say that? Miss Melissa. Miss Melissa, and I work for the Florida Forest Service. Can you guys say that? Florida Forest Service. And I brought with me a special friend for you guys if you're very, very good. You guys will be really, really good today? Yeah! Okay, so make sure you listen and remember spark in your head. Spark. Right. Okay, I want to read you a story. And the story is going to be up on the screen, but I also have the story in my hands. And I'm going to give your teachers one of these books. So if you want to go back and the teacher's okay with you looking at the pages, you can. So we're going to follow along on this big screen as Miss Melissa from the Florida Forest Service reads this book, okay? This is a true story of a little tiny bear cub who teaches us to be careful with fire. I'm sharing this story with you so you can understand how important it is for me and all of my little forest friends to never play with fire. Wildfires caused by careless people leave us all homeless. You can help me prevent wildfires by never playing with fire. Why don't you guys say that? We'll never play with fire. You try it. Never play with fire. Good, good. And if you see somebody playing with fire, you tell an adult, right? Absolutely. And remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Tiny Bear Cub was very happy in his forest in New Mexico. One day in 1950, a careless person started a fire in the Cub's forest. Someone called the ranger station while the Cub was climbing a tree to save his life. Firefighters fought the fire. If you'd go back one section. Firefighters fought the fire. Not only did they fight it with water, but shovels. I brought with me a shovel today right here. You put dirt on the fire and the fire goes out. Then you fight fire with bulldozers. And the people I brought with me today, like the guy behind you, he fights fires with bulldozers here in Florida. Can you believe that? Is that cool? Yeah. So you can no, not only fight fire with water, but shovels, but big old bulldozers. And the bulldozers, just like the shovel, put dirt on the fire. Or 
it removes the food for the fire. The bulldozer can take away the food source for the fire, and the food source for the fire is dead leaves, sticks, twigs, or anything that the fire wants to consume. Doesn't he have a cool job? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Firefighter. So let's finish our story. This bear was rescued. A firefighter gently cared for the bear, and the poor little bear was scared and injured. An animal doctor called a veterinarian cared for the cub's wounds. They called the cub Smokey Bear and moved him to his new home at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. He will always be the guardian of the forest. Smokey wants you to know five rules for fire prevention. Rule number one, he says, only you can prevent wildfires. Number two, always be careful with fire. This is what we tell our parents, right? Always be careful because we never play with fire. Rule number three, never play with matches or lighters. You see him, he's turning in his matches. He was going to play with, with fire, wasn't he? He was going to start a fire. That's not good, is it? Mm -hmm. Number four, always watch your campfire. If you go camping and make marshmallows with your parents, you tell them, be careful, right? Because you don't want anybody's home to burn down, right? Rule number five, make sure your campfire is completely out. You see the little bear cubs, they're pouring water on it, and then Smokey's taking dirt and shoveling dirt on it, then they stir it all up and make sure that fire is dead out. Yeah. And then Smokey is happy because you know his five rules and will help him prevent wildfires. Was that a good story? Yes. Do you guys want to meet my friend? Yes. Who do you think, quietly, who do you think I brought with me today? Oh, I got raising hands. I love this. Okay, who do you think I brought with me today? No? Okay, anybody else? Who do you think I brought with me today? Hint. Hint. Oh, I love how quiet you are. Okay, the little girl in the white back there. An animal? An animal? Possibly. I think I brought with me. school today. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Smokey Bear came to your school today. Are you guys cool and excited? Yeah. yeah? Okay. He's, he's going to be tall. He's going to be tall. He's not scary. He's my friend. Do you guys like me? Yeah. Okay. He's going to come out here and say hi. You guys want him to come out here and say hi? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. He's just your friend and you don't have to touch him. He's hiding because people think you're scared. Are you guys scared? No. Okay, if you're not scared, say his name, Smokey Bear. One, two, three. Smokey Bear. Oh, he didn't think so. Say it a little louder. One, two, three. Smokey Bear. Oh, there he is. Say hi, Smokey. Hi, Smokey. So do we tell him we never play with what? guys. And if you don't want him to say hi, he doesn't have to. Oh, he's coming through. And when Smokey comes up this way, he's going to do a story for us. Do you know where the lights are, Scott? Want to hang out right here? Smokey, I brought with me a bucket. 
and a shovel over here if you want to when we go through Scott. our story. Scott. Smokey asked me to tell you guys a story. You guys want me to tell you a story? Yeah. Smokey can't talk, right? So he's asked me to talk for him. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Smokey, you ready? All right. One warm, sunny day, Smokey woke up from his long winter's nap. He said hello to his old friend that he had not seen for a while. He saw an eagle flying high in the sky. He smelled the fresh spring air. But wait, he smelled something strange in the air too. What was it? Oh, yes, smoke. He smelled smoke. Smokey knew it was time to get back to work. So he started marching. It was his job to tell people about wildfire prevention. That means being careful with fire. Oh, I look at people. Everybody's paying attention. Spark, right? Good, good. He could smell the smoke. But he didn't know where the fire was. He looked, but he couldn't see the fire. So he started walking. He walked and walked and walked. It was now afternoon, and he was getting very hot and very tired. He was also getting very thirsty, but he couldn't find his water bottle. He could smell more smoke now, but couldn't see the fire. So he decided to climb a big, steep hill so he could get a better view. He looked for the fire. <gasps> Aha! There it was! It was coming from behind some houses on the edge of the woods. Smokey hurried as fast as he could to get to the fire. Kids say, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry. Oh, you can say it louder than that. Hurry, hurry. Good job. At least, at last he got to the fire. Someone had been burning a pile of leaves, and a strong wind had spread the fire into the grass near the garage. Smokey started to think, how can he put the fire out? We learned this today, didn't we? How can you put the fire out? Oh, the little girl in pink over there. How can water. Water. Very good. Water. Anybody else? We also learned something else. Little girl over here. Red. What do you think? Dirt. Dirt. With a shovel, right? Water. Dirt. What are, anybody remember that big thing we talked about? Uh, let's see. Little boy in blue over here. What was that big thing that this guy fights fires with? A bulldozer! Awesome, you guys were listening. So, Smokey found a shovel, and he threw some dirt on the fire to smother it, to stop it. He worked hard, but he needed something else to put that fire out. And you guys said, water! 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 water. You guys are great! So, he found a little pond nearby, and he also found a bucket. So he put the bucket in the pond, and he splashed water on it. <gasps> <laughs> Smokey got the, the water in the right spot so that he would not get burned. He threw the water on the fire, and then everybody clapped, right? Good job. The kids saw how dangerous it was to burn on windy days. Fires can burn trees, sometimes houses, even people. That's sad, isn't it? Smokey reminded all the kids to always be careful of fire and never play with matches. And remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Was that good? Yeah, say thank you, Smokey, for coming. Thank you, Smokey, for coming.
we've seen two Smokey Bear programs, how different and unique the whole program can be, we want to go into some classroom tips. First of all, if you've never done a Smokey Bear program, please go to the U.S. Forest Service site and pull up the Smokey Bear guidelines. This is a great tool and it talks about the things you can and cannot do when you do a Smokey Bear program or use Smokey Bear uh, for any kind of program. So some classroom tips. I have about eight classroom tips for you. Number one, plan it out. Get really planned and detailed. Call ahead of time. Schedule who, what, when, where, why, and, and know all the details of this. I have a list that I go through, a checklist, and it goes through all the things that I really need to know. Like the, the two programs you just saw, audio visuals. That's a very important thing to coordinate before you do a Smokey Bear program. Number two, location, location, location. When you do a Smokey Bear program, you don't want to set the kids up where they're going to get distracted. You want all the attention focused on you. If you put them next to a window, they're going to watch the person walking by the window. So you want to pick a location where you can actually be in charge and control of the program. Number three, introduce yourself and the rules. That's really important of the program. You want to talk to the teachers ahead of time. What I did was I went and talked to the teachers ahead of time and asked them, what is your communication style to, uh, to tell the kids to listen up? And for them, it was spark. That's what the whole school program does, is spark. Spark means you're a good student. And that's what I did ahead of time. Sometimes it's birdie V, sometimes it's listening ears, sometimes they do hand clapping. Whatever it is, you ask the teachers ahead of time and find out how you get the kids to listen. Another thing is, if you want to get kids to sit down, they do something nationwide. It's called crisscross applesauce. Believe it or not, that's the whole program. It teaches kids to sit on their behind and cross their legs and sit up straight. So these are little tips that I have learned through the years that I'd like to share with you. Another thing is reward good behavior. I'd love to go into programs and bring in some smoky bear bandanas or giveaways. Something that I can give the kids who are being really good at that time. So if a kid's listening or answers the question perfectly, I can walk up and give them and show all the other kids that this kid is doing something exceptional. Another thing you can do is bring the kids up with you. Have the kid turn the flip book. Have the kid dress up in the gear. Have them be a part of you. If you have a large audience, then you can have several kids. This is very, very important. Get the kids involved and reward good behavior. Um, how to get the kids to listen and uh, quiet. You ask the teachers ahead of time what kind of listening tools they have. And I think I talked to you about listening ears, Birdie B. Number four, suggested messages is really important. Think ahead of time, what do you want the suggested message to be? For me, it's the Florida Forest Service. I want to make sure my name gets out there. So when the kids go home and they tell their parents, what did you learn today, Mommy? Well, I learned daughter, or however the conversation goes, I learned, Mommy, that the Florida Forest Service fights wildfires, and the Florida Forest Service brought in Smokey Bear. Believe it or not, if you say it enough times for the kids, they're going to remember. What are your suggested messages? You want the kids to be aware that you don't want them to play with matches. Whatever your suggested messages is, or two ways in and out, like you've seen with, with the presentation. Very important. Think of ahead of time before you do the program. Number five, keep your program short. You have uh, toddlers at the, from three, age three to age six. You have, they have a short attention span between five to 10 minutes. So keep your program short and vary it. If you've seen the two productions we just showed you with Smokey Bear, they, they had two different varies. They showed it a little flip book style and then we did a skit or we did a comic book, and then the, the uh, firefighter talked about gear. You want to switch things up. It's very, very important so the kids don't lose concentration. Number six, um, number five, sorry. Keep your program short. Number six, um, act the part. Get all excited, get all involved, have fun with it. If the pro program asks you to be quiet, then be quiet. If the program asks you to be excited, then be excited. Get all involved. And number seven, involve everyone. No, you don't need to involve everyone. Some kids actually get a little scared. So 
so you don't want them to be involved if they are scared. You just say you don't have to be involved, you don't have to get close to Smokey Bear. And finally, number eight is have fun. That's the most important thing, have fun. If you're having fun, then the kids are gonna enjoy themselves and have this memory for the rest of their lives. Thank you.